behalf of the Board of Directors of the Head Consortium, I would like to welcome you to our 2016 Best Practices Showcase celebrating technology innovation for Hispanic success in higher education. My name is Teresa Castro, and I will be in charge of introducing the speakers for this breakout session. This session is being recorded, and the presenters will let you know whether you will be able to, to address your questions at any time during the presentation, or after the presentation has finished. This presentation will be delivered in English, and if you require simultaneous translation, it will be available in channel four. Additional headphones are available in the uh, reception area downstairs. We will also appreciate that you change your mobile phone to, your mobile phone to vibration or silent mode in order to have your full attention to this session. Finally, we will distribute the uh, evaluation form. Please make sure to complete it before the session is over and hand it in before you leave, it, you leave this room. So now, we are ready to start. The presenters for this session are uh, Dr. Jose Magdaleno. He is the Vice President of Students Affairs for Lehman College of the City University of New York, and also a Dr. Delindra Williams, and he is the director of the sophomore year experience at Old Southern Lehman College. And the title of this presentation is Tier uh, Early Warning System, Removing Student Barriers to Enhance Collaboration. So please uh, welcome uh, Dr. McCallum. Thank you all, and good afternoon. You are the brave, hearty souls. You hung out till the very end. 3.30, the last workshop on the first day, and we know what a temptation it, ha it was for some of you to do some other things. But we're very, very glad that you're here. We're still on fire. We're still on fire. I'm on fire. <laughs> we are very excited about our Title V project. Uh, that we are here to tell you about. As she mentioned, my name is Jose Magdaleno. I'm the Vice President for Student Affairs at Lehman College, which is part of the City University of New York. Now, I have sat in the rooms with many of you today, and uh, we've heard a lot of interesting presentations from various uh, campuses and people. And, but before I get into my presentation, if I could ask you, how many of you work at two-year public or private institutions? If you could raise your hand. Two-year public or private? Okay. The rest, I assume, work at four-year schools? Okay. You too? Okay. Two four-year schools? Um, I'm delighted to be here with our director of our Title V project, which is called our Sophomore Year Initiative, our SYI program. And in the next uh, 50 minutes or so, I just want to review the agenda with you for today's presentation. Uh -huh. We're already technologically challenged. <laughs> Let's see. Slide. We tested this before you got here. It was working fine. Don't worry, that You know, that, that happens. Someone once told me get finger puppets or get puppets. Okay. All right. So here's here's our agenda for today, um, and, and we're going to go through these things relatively quickly, but in enough depth to uh, provide you with an overview of our exciting project at Lima. And of course, feel free to stop me or. Brian Devendra Williams at any point with any questions you may have. 
So we're, uh, we're going to start by just talking very briefly about Lehman College, Lehman College at a glance, our persistence and retention data, brief overview, a description of our sophomore year initiative. We're going to talk about the sophomore slump, what it is, what research there is about this phenomena that is called the sophomore slump, what are the institutional risks and solutions that we are applying to this problem. We're going to talk, of course, about our early intervention and tracking system, which is STEER. And of course, there are many competitors to STEER. We chose this software platform at Lehman. We're going to talk about our service delivery model, um, how we provide wraparound services to our students to, to eliminate barriers, our outcomes, and our sophomore to junior retention rate, which, as a hint, we're very proud of right now. We're working to make it better. The national average, as you can see here, is 54%, mainland statistics. We're talking now about the percentage of students that persist from sophomore to junior. The national average is 54%. Right now at Lehman, it is 68.4%. And we believe that this new initiative is a big factor in helping us to reach this level of persistence. So let me say a few words quickly about Lehman College. I know that some of you, especially my, coll my colleague from Ostos Community College, our neighbor in the Bronx, uh, is very well aware of. So bear with me, because you know all of this. Uh, we are a four-year public institution. We are part of the City University system. We're one of 26 colleges that are part of CUNY. And we serve over 500,000 students throughout the system, not at Lehman, God forbid. 500,000 would be way too much. Now, it's not 500,000 degree-seeking students. I'm including 270,000 students earning a degree or a certificate, as well as 230,000 uh, students in our um, continuing education professional development programs. Lehman's enrollment, uh, this is actually headcount enrollment. In uh, spring 15, 12,606. Fall 14, 12,398. So we're in the 12,500 area. That's about what we're averaging right now. And as you can see, the percentage of Latino students enrolled at Lehman College is significant, certainly not what you see in Puerto Rico, because I'm sure it's 99%. But it's 47% approximately Latino students enrolled at Lehman College. The major Latino groups at Lehman are from uh, Santo Domingo, they're Dominicans, and Puerto Ricans. Those are the two largest groups enrolled at Lehman College. Uh, <clears throat> further, there's a breakdown. Undergraduate students, 83% of our enrollment is undergraduate students, 60.7% graduate students. So we have around 2,000 graduate students. We are a master's degree granting institution, so we only offer bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, and we offer one doctorate in conjunction with the CUNY Graduate Center, and that is a doctorate in plant sciences. So we have a relationship with El Jardín Botánico del Bronx, that is from the Bronx, which is a uh, an international institution. Um, as you can see, we serve very significant numbers of part-time students. 42% of our undergraduates are part-time. And of course, the vast majority of our graduate students are part-time. You can see what our largest programs are, probably of no surprise to you. Nursing, business administration, sociology, accounting, social work are our largest undergraduate programs at Lehman. We 
serve many, many transfer students. To give you an example, our entering class for September, for the fall, we enrolled around 650 new first-time, full-time freshmen, first semester students. That same semester, we enrolled approximately 2,000 transfer students. So most of our new students are transfer students. And I'm giving you all of this information just to provide a context for you to understand the environment in which we, we work at Lehman. The average age, you can see, 27 years old. Uh, we serve a mostly female population. Uh, as has been written about in the literature, the men are getting lost on the road to education. They're not graduating high school in significant numbers, and I think we're all painfully aware of the fact that men are not entering college, and they're certainly not completing. And we see that very clearly at a place like Lehman College, where Three out of four students are female. Of course, we serve many students from the Bronx. Uh, it's about 60% of our students come from the Bronx. For those of, those of you who know New York City or know that area, you know that the Bronx, in terms of socioeconomic dimensions, is one of the three poorest counties in the United States of America. With a population, I'm talking now, there are counties where there are a thousand goats and 10,000 cows and 600 people. I'm talking now about counties with a population of 250,000 and higher. So high population areas. There are one or two other counties in the United States that uh, are poorer than the Bronx. They're located in the border areas of Texas. Okay? But Clearly, uh, 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 we serve many, many low-income students, a uh, very high percentage of first generation. Uh, approximately 55 to 60% of our students have an annual, an average annual income of less than $30,000 a year. And if you live in New York City or any other high-cost area in the country, in the mainland, you know that $30,000 is not a lot of money. Okay, so what, what were we seeing? Uh, what we noticed in terms of our own persistence and graduation rates was that one of the biggest areas where we were losing students was from the sophomore to the junior year. Right? And um, our overall six-year graduation rates are around 37% right now. And our four-year our four year rates, and this, this is not completely up to date, has increased slightly. Four-year graduation rate right now is 19%. We're not happy about that. And so um, we determined that one of the things that we needed to do was to create a system, a process, to identify students at risk very early in the semester. This is an addition. Now, the thing to understand about this program and this process, this is not all that we do with regards to re retention. This is an important part of what we do with regards to retention. So we were looking to involve our faculty colleagues in a process of identification and intervention with students early on in the first six weeks of the semester who would collaborate with our academic advisors and help us to create a continuous intervention approach to engaging our students and linking them, connecting them to other important services on campus. All of you who have these services and you know very often that some, sometimes students who could benefit from those services never get there. And so one of the key parts of this initiative 
is that it is intrusive. We don't wait for students to come to us. We go knocking on their doors. We call them. We email them. If we see them in the cafeteria, we stop them and we say, Juan, Maria, we need to talk to you. Our goal, of course, is to increase their academic progress, their persistence, and to increase the communication and collaboration between faculty and key service providers on campus. <clears throat> so in 2012, as an HSI, as a Hispanic serving institution, and I know all of you know what that is, we were delighted to get a five-year grant that provided us with $3.2 million over five years, so it's around $625,000 to $640,000 a year to implement this, this, uh, this project. And it represented a collaboration between the Student Affairs Division and the Enrollment Management Division. I lead the Student Affairs part of this. I have a counterpart who is the Vice President for Enrollment Management. So jointly, we wrote this proposal and between the two of us, between both vice presidents, uh, we do not uh, have any oversight of academic departments. But we do, between both areas, have managerial responsibility, senior level responsibility for a range of student support services, from the child care center to the personal counseling center to the academic advising center to tutoring services, both of us manage all of those areas. Enrollment management is located within the Division of Academic Affairs. So they, were, they bring in the academic departments. Okay, the, targeted, the target of our efforts were sophomores. So we focused our efforts on first time, full time freshmen, as well as all sophomores, and when I say sophomores, we're talking about students <coughs> from 15, really to 59 credits, although we say 45 credits. But once you reach 60 credits at our school, you're a junior. That makes you a junior. So our focus was second semester freshman all the way up and through till you become that senior with a primary focus on everyone and all the transfer students with 15 to 45 credits. And our goals, as I mentioned earlier, was to increase the persistence rates from first to second to third year and the rate of progress towards graduation. We wanted to focus on helping students select a major. Some of you have students who know from day one what they want to major in. I want to be a biologist. I want to be a nurse. I want to be a social worker. But many of you also have students who come and they say, I don't know, I'm not sure. And so they fall into this category of undecided majors or undeclared majors. We have our share of undecided majors, and we all know what the literature tells us about students who don't have a major. If you don't know where you're going, any road might take you there, and you may get off on the early exit. So, not having a major is clearly associated by the research with, dropped, with dropping out or stopping out. So we wanted to focus on that. We wanted to create an inclusive service delivery system that involved our academic advisors. Now all of our colleges are organized differently. right? On our college, we have a unit that focuses on academic advising. We have a unit that focuses on career development. So we have a career development center, and they focus on a whole range of career development issues. We also have a separate unit of licensed clinical social workers or psychologists that focus more on mental health issues. Everybody's organized differently at some schools.